My name is Eugene Edwards. Welcome to Fender Play Live. Today we're talking with a very talented artist, Justice West. He's played with artists such as Miguel, Mac Miller, Vince Gill, and many more. And he's here to talk about some influential guitar riffs, cover some tunes from Fender Play, and he'll talk guitar with us. Plus, as always, we've got some discounts and giveaways for you, so please stick around. But uh, without any further ado, please welcome my guest, Justice West. Welcome, sir. Yo, what's hey. up? You said giveaways? I should be watching this, not on here. What in the world? We'll, we'll work something out. <laughs> so, uh, wh where are you? Where, where, where are you uh, sitting today? Where, where are you? Where are we talking to you from? I am at home in Kansas, and this is my basement. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, this is where I'm at. Can Kansas City, the uh, the city of fountains. Yes, dude. The plaza, just fountains everywhere. Yeah, Water absolutely. bills pretty high. The, the water bill's pretty high, and and uh, and uh, some barbecue. Hopefully, you're you're getting to partake of some still. Yeah, I have barbecue at least at least three times a week. Like at least that's like minimum. <laughs> so <laughs> that's excellent. Yeah, I miss I miss Kansas. I miss going there. Uh, we usually play there or in that area a few times a year, and uh, and I, I love the food scene there. Great music scene. Great music town. Great history. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, just a reminder for the audience: if you're watching, we are live. So if you have any questions about guitars for Justice, drop them in the comments, and we'll try our best to get to them. Also, we're offering a discount on the shirt that I'm wearing. This this kind of Hawaiian vibe, and Ooh. you can get it for yourself for thirty percent off by entering the code RIFF thirty. That's R I F F thirty. Radio India Foxtrot Foxtrot three zero. Only available for 48 hours, so act fast. Uh, pretty impressed with that phonetic alphabet, weren't you there, Justice? Yes, yes, pretty yes, slick. yes. A lot of time at airports. Uh, so, so today you're going to be playing some songs from Fender Play. Yeah. That you, that you chose. You hand-selected these. And we're going to dig mm -hmm. into your style and influence a bit. But before we start, tell us what guitar you're playing right there. So this is a Fender American Ultra Strat. This is the uh, single, single, single setup. I also, these guitars are so amazing. I have two. So I also have another one that's single, single humbucker, um, which is just as great. Um, and uh, yeah, but this is the one I'm playing today. Just, you know, standard Strat. Um, I love these things, man. Is it the, the blue, I think I've seen you play a blue one. Is that the single, yeah. single humbucker? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful. Can we hear that one, please? Yeah, of course. A little demo. Yeah. <laughs> Nice and clean. Yes. And with a Stratocaster, you, do you uh, immediately go to one particular uh, pickup setup or you kind of just depends on the mood and you're not allegiant to any particular one? Nah, I, I definitely play in the third position, the middle position. That's like my, that's like, yeah, that's yeah. the position for me. I'm, I'm, I'm the same with you. This is, this is uh, uh, made in, Me this is a, a strap from the Mexican factory. This is probably about 20 years old. Now, it's the only guitar I've ever bought sight unseen. I bought it online because mm -hmm. I dropped this whole active pickup harness situation into nice. it. And but I'm but I'm the same way. I go to that third that middle position because that to me that's the unique thing. Uh, and then after that it's two or four. But... <laughs> Yeah, that, sort of that kind of like right there. Nice. Um, okay, so we're going to dig into some of your background and influences here soon. But first, you chose a few songs from Fender Play that yeah. you're going to cover for us. So let's hear one of those now. And we're going to start with uh, one of my favorite band of all time, the Beatles. Uh, and for you Fender Play users out there, we have lots of Beatles tunes to choose from. And yes. Justice, you chose one uh, to cover. And uh, I'm not going to billboard that. I just want to hear it and we'll talk about it afterwards. So please, the stage All right. Yours. Little darling, it's been a long, long, long winter Little darling, it's been so long since you've been here Here comes the sun, do 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 Here comes the sun, I say, it's alright Little darling, the smiles return into their faces 
Little darling, it's been so long since they've been here. But here comes the sun, do do do. Here comes the sun. I say it's all right. Sun, 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 here it comes Sun, 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 here it comes Little darling, I see the snow is finally melting Little darling, it's been so long since it's been clear the sun didn't do you here comes the sun and I say it's all right here comes the sun didn't do here comes the sun and I say it's all right it's all right it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Believe me, it's not just me clapping. There's a lot of people out there thinking, just thinking, what just happened? <laughs> That's beautiful. Ah, thank so, you. So, uh, so let's let's discuss this. Um, you changed the key. Yes. Not by much, but you changed the key. Uh, and uh, we're, we're familiar with this, the, the Beatles recording of it. Uh, it's just indelible. Uh, and uh, those of us guitar players know that George had capoed at the seventh fret. And yes. And plays it in kind of that A position. So it kind of... That kind of chiming yeah. higher end thing. Mm -hmm. you go, and you go down to first position. So you already start off by just completely... Reimagining yeah. it in such a way. Mm -hmm. Approaching a song that you know everyone knows so well, and a specific version so well, what's the process for you adapting a song like that for yourself? Well, the first thing is figuring out, you know, what key is comfortable for you, obviously. Um, and depending on dynamically, uh, dynamically, wow. Um, <laughs> dynamically? Yes, like where you want to put your, your spots or your moments. And so besides changing the song to fit my own personal artistry, I even create more moments of, of individuality. Um, excuse me. So like approaching a song, that's kind of the first thing I think of. It's like, you know, where does it start? Um, and like thinking of the timbre of their voices, like they were naturally like way higher singers. Like mm -hmm. I'm definitely kind of in like this baritone-ish range. Um, and so it's like, okay, like picking an advantageous key allows me to then expand the song um, to be myself during the song. Um, sometimes being limited to like the key alone can, can limit you to your performance because you're like trying to emulate, you know? Um, then from their arrangement, uh, I honestly will sit and play with chords. Like I'll just, um, just like implement different chords in different spots and see what it feels like. Um, yeah. And that's really it. We need an um counter. Cause I'm an um, <laughs> we need like a ding every time I say, um, we got it. We'll get, we'll get a sound effect going here for that. So in, in, in this case, so I know it's like, so for, yeah, you're an open G. And then yeah. for and for your, I think your C you had like an add two kind of use uh -huh. that one there right and so so right after that that's a different voicing than sort of the than the the normal four chord that that the Beatles use and then uh, after the bridge or when you can you kind of created your own turnaround you created that that movement uh huh and you played that two different ways so so we're talking about chord substitutions and, and things now is there a process where you have to unhear the original or you're not supposed to be doing that you're just like you said you're just working from from the the, the nucleus of, of of what you want to do with a song and let everything yeah. come out of that well the fun part about a song like this is that you inherently probably already know it 
So even when I went to learn the song, quote unquote, I focused on the lyrics, which are obviously the most, most important song. It's the recognizable element. Um, and then I kind of approached the chords from like not focusing super hard on what they played. Like just like, OK, right. let me get the lyrics, get the melody out. Um, and then a lot of that comes from, you know, I grew up playing in church and um you know, playing because I play bass and guitar, like as a bass player, as a guitar player, you know, the music director might call a substitution or, you know, the song might go in a different direction. And of course, most times use like the number system. Um, sure. And then for like um, alternate chords, you know, they might just say like E flat and then you have to like determine which kind of E flat they mean. <laughs> Um, and so all that to say, it kind of starts to build a melodic sense of how these chords fit together, um, which helps a lot. Because uh, when you approach it from like melodically, it's like the Here comes the sun, do 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 here comes the sun. You know, so you can like kind of change because they're kind of like the tone of those words and the tone of the song almost lends to that chord being there already. Like the Beatles might not have thought about it when they recorded it. Who knows? They might have thought of it and been like, you know what? That's too much for the record, you know, but. Well, if I may, that's the funny thing about that particular chord there is a, is a chord that George would use a lot in his writing. He just didn't have to use it on that song. Yeah. But you put a very George chord in there. Now, um, you mentioned the gospel influence, and I, this may, uh, I have a theory on why you chose this song, but it's mine. Why the Beatles? Why this song? Well, first off, given the current state of the world, um, I figured that people hearing this song like it'll like if this song doesn't resonate with you in this time you're just crazy like these lyrics are like it's what we need you know it's yeah. the hope that the sun is going to shine again that the ice is melting away that you're finally seeing people smile again like it's very interesting how they wrote this song because because being a songwriter um they they like they didn't choose a lot of words they chose their words very specifically and what they chose to repeat is also so specific, you know, um, like here comes the sun. They say that they focus on that element of the song more than even, you know, bad things going away. They just focus on the good things coming. So it's like a, an interesting perspective. I always thought this is uh, George wrote a lot of overtly gospel songs at around mm -hmm. this time. And this one, though, I put in that category because of the sure. there's light at the end of the tunnel sort of thing yeah and, and you know it's all of the flip side of all things must pass well here comes the sun yeah. and um and i think that your version somehow highlights that no pun intended um <laughs> and, and yes you are a songwriter we're gonna get you we're gonna get you to play one of your own songs here later in the episode um but but for now if you don't mind can we can we hear another tune yes let's do it all right here's another one that we have featured on fender play it's pretty different from the beatles uh, but it's a great artist nonetheless, uh, Amos Lee, great songwriter. Uh, help us out here. Uh, I think you're going to do Sweet Pea, correct? Yeah. Let's hear it. Sweet Pea, apple of my eye. I don't know when and I don't know why But you're the only reason I keep on coming home Sweet Pea, what's all this about? I don't get your ways, all you do is fuss and pow But you're the only reason I keep on coming home I'm like the rock of Gibraltar All I do is falter And the words just get in the way I know I'm gonna crumble I'm trying to stay humble But I never think before I say Sweet pea, oh, keep on my soul I know sometimes I'm just out of control But you're the only reason I keep on coming You're the only reason I keep on coming You're the only reason I keep on coming home Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> that's great hearing that song again. It's been a while since I've heard that too. So, yes. So, so, so this that song obviously has um, what we would really, really um, kind of standard rhythm changes. Yep. Uh, there's, that's why it lends itself this very classic style, kind of Tin Pan Alley sort of thing. Yeah. Um, how did you come about this song? Because I think you've been performing this one for a while. Correct? I mean, it's, in, it's been yes. In the I've been so. doing this song. It was my mom. Uh, so my mom is a songwriter she's in the music industry and has worked with a bunch of folks and when I decided that I wanted to start singing and playing guitar I was maybe what like 14 13 and 14 and um, we were trying to find like a song that represents like I was a little kid so even saying like being an artist is still like subjective because it's like (laughs) you're a little kid like what in the world you know what I'm saying (laughs) Um, and so my mom being an artist, like she's an artist developer, she was like, oh, I know the perfect song. Like it features a guitar, you can add in some runs, you know, and it's not too advanced for your age. Um, and it's funny how many different versions of this song I've performed throughout (laughs) the years. Um, there was a point where it was like, just like the original, there was a point where I added like a million runs and chords just to see (laughs) how many spaces. And now I'm back to like the tasteful justice version. So, um, but yeah, it came from my mom. It was all her idea. It's funny. So the taste, as you said, the tasteful version is, would you say that's when you eliminated a lot of the extra? Yes. the, The extraneous things. Yes, 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 yes. I had a guitar instructor when, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, we were talking about Miles Davis. We we're talking about playing less, and he said it's like a storyteller. Great storytellers don't have ums, you know. Mm-hmm. They don't have those things, and those are the notes that we don't need as yeah. players. And it just over time we learn how to drop those. Yeah. As great storytellers drop those vocal ticks out of there. And what's earlier. what's so There's interesting that. about this subject matter of of how much or how much not to play cuz of course, you know, I get a lot of dudes hit me up cuz if you look me up on Instagram, I'm playing a lot of notes all the time. <laughs> and um what I what I started deducting is, you know, with music being a language, um how you communicate is is usually how your music phrases and so like a lot of my homies that tour with like drummers and jazz musicians it's always very interesting to see how their personalities correlate with their playing styles uh and so what the human brain can detect that you don't really even think about is that even if somebody is playing a lot of notes if they're playing it from a place in their heart that is real and it's their communication you almost have like the innate ability to to decipher still what they're saying in a way mm-hmm. um so when people always ask me like you know what's like what is tastefulness or what is like um there's like standard definition and we could name players we think are tasteful Mm -hmm. but then as you get into other genres it's like the definition kind of warps just a little bit um because again like jazz is not necessarily about speed but if inherently jazz came out of a time when people were oppressed and all this stuff the bebop and and all the speed it came from frustration that's like part of the language so you know observing the genre you're a part of is a big help that's a I, that's a fascinating uh, couple of paragraphs right there i'm I, I will never forget what you just said that's that's awfully wonderful and um uh you justice we are getting questions from the audience so do you mind yeah. if, we, if we run through okay let's do uh, it uh, watching on facebook grant glass so ask Justice, do you always use your thumb to play on those lower strings? And this is a conditional answer, I think. Go ahead. Uh, if you could rewind it, which you can't because it's live. Ha ha. I did just drop my pick. So what you <laughs> saw was a very smooth transition through techniques based on user error. <laughs> um, but I am getting so I actually injured my thumb uh, last year and I've been like, in this recovery thing and and sometimes the weight of the pit can cause joint soreness just because too i've been playing for so long Mm -hmm. uh so i have been dabbling more in finger style like finger picking using your thumb doing tremolo with your first middle and and ring finger uh so i am using my thumb more like you'll definitely see me using my thumb a lot more um in the near future but All right. <laughs> we've got that to look forward to. Yes. Uh, One thing I can't add to that real quick mm-hmm. is 
it does depend on a uh, tone style that you're going for. If you want to use a pig, pigs are naturally brighter, while fingers can be a lot warmer uh, in attack. Uh, so that also changes. Like if I'm playing a big arena gig and I need to take this blaring solo, like I would use a pick so that it's like the attack is really like instant and aggressive. While playing here, it probably would be better to use my fingers, you know? You know what I have found is if I don't use a pick and I use just all fingers in my right hand, I my my uh, note choice is much more specific. Yeah, I don't rely on the pick to kind of make up for anything. Yeah, and dude, things. same and now, here. So my, I play in more phrases. I play more mm-hmm. melodically. So you might be surprised. I hundred percent agree. That same thing happened to me. Like with the pick, I would just glide for days because yes. I don't know. You just glide with your fingers, and might be just because like the connection between all your you know everything is more connected in a way but I 100% same experience now this one's coming from Mark uh, Lombardo when did you start guitar well you said that uh, uh, but uh, and how long before you experimented with your own song so what was the transition from getting a guitar in your hands and then moving over into your own tunes it was years I started playing when I was eight um, and I, I specifically remember not getting into experimentation until like five or six years into playing the way I, I learned was I would mimic records. I would just mimic guitar solos, chord progressions, you know, sax solos, all just all different perspectives of music. And so it was actually quite frustrating. I remember being young and especially playing in church, they'd always be like, go Justice, take a solo. And I'd be like, I actually have no clue how to solo. Like all I can do <laughs> is play chords. And they like, look at me like I was crazy. Like you're a guitar player, you don't know how to take a solo. But it was because I trained myself and I took lessons for a couple of years, but most of it was a lot of like, just being self-taught uh, books. Like I know we live in digital age, um, but books are still great. Chord books. People chord are always books. like, how do you expand your chord vocabulary? I'm like, I bought a chord book and I played every single chord in there. And the ones I liked, I just started using them. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> kind of how that went. But um, yeah, so it, it was a while before I got into experimentation. And I'll say, you know, again, on the topic of music being a language, uh, little kids don't start using scientific mumbo jumbo words. They usually start off with like the simple things that they hear their parents say. So sometimes that initial like mimicking is really good because um, it puts you on the fast track to speaking music fluently opposed to like stumbling around trying to find words, you know, metaphorically. There you go. Well, uh, I'll take this opportunity to transition smoothly. And to convince you into playing one of your own songs for us. Yes. I'm going to pick that pick back up. <laughs> Find the pick. Here, yeah, here, take this one. Oh, yes. There we go. I just grabbed that be, off of wild. Dude, wouldn't yeah. that be awesome? What if you could, like, <laughs> no, 3D print? <laughs> like, if you could, like, say, oh, here's a pick, and then, like, something over here. I just here. send you this Fender Heavy, man. If we were Penn and Teller, we probably would have had that worked out already, and you would have. You yeah. Palm there you guys go. Of. Unrehearsed magic. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes I'm devoted Sometimes I just want to quit Sometimes I get lonely Sometimes I'm just sick of living But I want someone to come and lay with me Wake up in the morning and stay with me Someone who ain't scared of commitment Someone who listens Cause sometimes I can't find my way out Stuck in the maze that I call my head I'm going crazy over things that I have no control of Sometimes I can focus Sometimes I can lose my cool I hate being lied to Maybe 
makes me feel like such a fool Baby, you don't have to hide, just be real with me Always tell the truth and set us free Freedom from the chains of the misery Vision is so clear ah, Sometimes I can't find my way out Stuck in the place that I call my head I'm going crazy over Things that I have no control of You see I'm stuck in my mind A complex design On a merry-go-round Upside down go again in my mind the complex design on a merry-go-round upside down here we go again cause sometimes i can't find my way out stuck in the maze that i call my head i'm going crazy Complex design on a merry-go-round upside down. Here we go again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that diminished run on the word upside down, man. That is, mm. that is like I think is that uh, onomatopoeia or uh, alliteration? That's something, something. Yeah, really, really, really uh -huh. cool. yeah, <laughs> yeah. You caught that. You see? How oh I man, there's a lot to catch there. Now I love this song, and what's uh, really, really, really uh, interesting to me here is because I'm very familiar with with your your, your record of that, the recording, which yes. has a very, very specific uh, kind of bass motif. Yes. And, and it's nowhere to be seen in the version you just did. So you kind of deconstructed your own tune. Yes. So the, the thing that I learned, so I, I would play for my mom in church. That was like my, my roots. We would play, we would do a few songs. Um, and it's like a blessing and a curse. I can't play a song the same way twice. Ah. Like I can get close, <laughs> I can get real close, but there's always going to be something spur of the moment. And um, it's actually been like a great, especially so for everybody, so that's my song Control, EP out everywhere, Spotify, Apple, Justice, West, it's me, you're watching me right now. I'm um, so sorry, I didn't back sell the tune. That was a terrible, hey, that was a real yeah. faux pas. So thank you for doing that. Hey, no, it's all good. <laughs> um, so if you guys go and listen to the tune, yeah, it's like a very specific bass line that I wrote. And then this drum pattern that I finger drummed on my, uh, on my typing <laughs> keyboard of my laptop using Addictive Drummer. Uh, and that's like the, the workup of the song. Now, when I go and perform live, setting is so important to me. Uh, I have stories of when I first started performing as an artist in L.A., and there'd be like clubs and everybody's kind of drunk and talking and you know stick to the script works when people are coming to see you and they know who you are and all this stuff like you know when John Mayer is playing Bridgestone he like he can do whatever he wants but stick to the script works because people just want to see him well when you're a newcomer people don't know what the heck you're about to do they don't <laughs> and sometimes they don't care so like one of my greatest moments as Justice West was people were talking, they weren't listening. The first song of my set is supposed to start like quiet and somber for dynamics. And I had all this planned out and the room is so loud, like nobody's yeah. paying attention. So I just cranked my amp all the way up and started playing, started like soloing. And then I stopped and the room was dead silent because everybody's very concerned as to what's going on on the stage. And then I started into the song. Um, but even being sensitive to format, like if you watch your crowd, people respond to music. Um, they like you can see it. And this is for like smaller venues, obviously, like, you know, you're not going to look out and be like, dang, I see people in section EF 94 up in the top. You really like this, huh? I'm like, no, you won't see that. <laughs> but for so for this live setting, it is 
and in contrast with the other songs I performed, keeping the, the kind of the tapestry of the songs consistent so that it feels like a cohesive set. So when somebody hears this, like if they don't know Sweet Pea or they didn't know Here Comes the Sun, they might almost assume they're my songs. You know, you create kind of this world where people kind of tonally know what to expect from you. So that's why like reimagining my own song, also playing that bass line and singing is is uh, pretty difficult. So that also <laughs> is a topic of rearranging songs is when a part is too difficult. Don't try to kill yourself. Just make something else up. <laughs> that's good. Well, I wouldn't have put it past you because you're a monster player. But I was curious if you're going to like do. A, <laughs> if that I've was tried it. I yeah, have tried then- it. And it's. The contrasting rhythms like are so yeah. hard for me to play like one rhythm and then sing another rhythm over the top of that. It's it's like a brain I, problem. I urge everybody after this show they should they should look for your song. I know it's out there. I know it's on Spotify. People can quickly just look for Control by Justice West. Uh, and and again, but the point of the song came across because you just played it beautifully. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and. Um, uh, also, for those watching, if you, uh, I just have to remind you, if you want this shirt, and frankly, why wouldn't you, uh, use the promo code RIF30, okay, RIF30. Uh, now, Justice, you also teach, right? So, yes, I do okay. teach. So do you mind assigning some homework? Yes, I okay. got homework for That's y'all. Right. So, so now, well, so now for, for those of you, if you're tuning in for the first time, we're all about learning guitar here, and that means we like to give you guys some things to work on at home after the episode is over. So, Justice, you're up, man. Help us out with the homework. Okay, we got beginner level. You guys really should focus on fluidity of chord changes, something that takes a while, but as you practice it, you get better and better, and it makes learning songs so much easier. So you can take simple chords like G and C. I turn on a metronome so that, because metered practice gets you in the vein of if you were playing with some buddies of yours. Um, and just practice like making no space in between the chords, making all your changes seamless. Uh, again, super simple chords. You can do G and C or E and A, like chords that are kind of parallel to each other. Uh, just to like get your neck knowledge, get your fingers going. Uh, what's the next level? We got, what is it moderate or it's, what uh, are inter- they? Intermediate. Intermediate, okay, that's, that's right. Ra- wow. And this one, and uh, yeah, for this one, if I may, because we have this available on Fender Play, uh, mm. it's to play Here Comes the Sun. Yes. At full speed. Yes, which is great. Another thing I can add in there that's cool is like taking your chords and, and picking them like this get your hand nice and worked out with your wrist so playing at full speed but the chords of the song with different picking rhythms that's like yeah nice and that varies up that will actually that that maybe is another way to, of, of injecting your own personal style into something mm-hmm. right yes just just a little bit of a change up excellent and uh and for the advanced uh advanced I know this is so backwards. Advanced people should practice scales. (laughs) Sometimes when you get really advanced, you do advanced stuff all the time, and then you can't do that advanced stuff slowly. Oh. See? Because the key to playing fast is to play slow. You know, this is like some Miyagi stuff, right? I just (laughs) waxed on and waxed off, and and they missed it. I'm about to restore your entire home with that. I'm just yes. like, I'm so, yeah, exactly. So, and well, is there anything, real quick question, is there anything that, that you're, as a guitar player, that you're working on, or is there something that, that's giving you a hard time right now? Because actually the answer could be pretty inspirational to, to some beginners. Yeah, the thing I'm working on is definitely right hand technique. You can find so much more expression through the guitar by really using all of these phalanges here. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like, implementing my ring finger into my playing has added so much expression and even increases speed normally where you have to drag like a pick might seem light but every microgram to your hand matters so when you eliminate a pick um, there's no weight that your hand is fighting against so if you want to play like you know c to a on the high e string you know you can simply plug those two instead of having to drag a pick down the strings 
you know, because string skipping, um, like the small, and that's what I learned as I got faster. The smallest changes like action, a string gauge, um, and then pick weight can change your entire style of playing. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. Right hand technique, getting all my fingers to work together. Involved. Probably it comes from your piano playing because that attack is there. It's more yeah. instantaneous like a piano as opposed mm -hmm. to... Yeah, tip, man. Lots to learn from this guy. Now, uh, I think it's about time that we bring on our old pal Dylan for some exciting play updates. Dylan, are you there? Hey, I am here. How are you guys doing? Oh, there you go. Oh, how's your ficus? Oh, <laughs> oh the ficus is good. It's good. I've been watering, but not overwatering. That's one of the important that's, things. That's yeah. the trick. All right. Tell, well, uh, uh, tell us what, what you're playing and, and let's hear it in action. Yeah, I've got I've also got a uh, an American Ultra. Oh, Stratocaster. It's uh, I, I can't. I couldn't see yours, but is it uh, humbucker single single? No, Just this one's single single ah, single, like uh -huh. yours. My humbucker single single is over there. Aha! Uh -huh. See, it's important to have every pickup combination possible. Yes, <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> this one also has the S1 switching. So I'll show you guys. I'll kind of give you a little demo here. Let's see. Uh... <coughs> That S1 uh, parallel combo with the uh, ta or it's coil tap that's in there. So it sounds really mm -hmm. nice. It's it's sounds mighty, phantasmal. Mighty fine right hand technique, by the way. Um, what else do you have for us today, Dylan? Well, I have the fantastic honor of announcing, announcing the weekly winner every week for the Fender Play weekly giveaway. So if you don't know what the weekly giveaway is, basically we give away uh, a guitar or an amp. You get to pick. So you get three streaks a week. So as long as you get three seven-minute sessions in, you're automatically injured to win. Of course, you've got to be a member of Fender Play. So if you're not a member, you've got to join up, get your streaks, and then you're automatically entered to win. And I want to say your name next time. So uh, you guys ready to hear who won this week? Yes, we are. We're going to do some drum roll on our, on our left, right? Kind of yeah, give me something. Give me something. Here we go. Here we go. Two. Oh. Ah. Ken B. <laughs> Ken B. Congratulations, Ken. Wow. <laughs> Enjoy. I want to hear what you got. I want to hear what you picked. Uh, make sure you post it. <laughs> well, congrats to you, Ken, and enjoy your new guitar, bass, amp, whatever you choose. Uh, Dylan, what else do you have for us, man? So new on play, something that I'm really excited about, that we're really excited about. This is going to be fantastic. If you uh, maybe you've heard of a little artist called Billie Eilish. I don't know if you've heard. Wow. Oh, just Multi. grew up like, right down She's the street. She's just right around the corner. Just to my left. Yep. Uh huh. See. And um, no, I mean the sensation sweeping the nation. Perhaps you could say. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, just, that was that was great. <laughs> I just did that on the fly. Um, no, honestly though, uh, these songs are great. Uh, in fact, I'll play you. Uh, we've got, I believe, nine different Billie Eilish items. Wow, that signed, really? Including three riffs. Wow. We've got ukulele songs, uh, several electric guitar songs, including the one I'm about to show you. If I can see or so. <laughs> It's you gotta like that. Uh, we've also got and burn. We've got uh, ocean eyes. Um, that was when the party's over. We've got quite a few of them on there. So and there's ukulele there's, ones as well. And they're all just gonna. Uh, well, no, no. Uh, name can you name all of them though that we have up there? Just yeah, yeah, ocean so eyes and burn, burn. and uh, ocean eyes. Uh, the one I just played, which is uh, when the party's over. Um, uh, God, six feet under. Six feet mm -hmm. under. Six feet under. Uh, strange addiction. Strange addiction. My, My strange addiction. addiction. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So. I think we hit them all. I think we did nice. Them all. Do you get a prize? <laughs> oh man, I get a, a stick of gum every week, basically. So. <laughs> Taking the, the Kansas City fan I wrote you a song. 
<laughs> that's, that's, that's your playing music. All right. Well, thank you, Dylan, and and uh, and a huge thank you to you, uh, Justice West. Thank you for your time, for lending your yeah, talents of course. here, and the great support and the great, great words of wisdom and advice. Uh, uh, thank you for stopping by, sharing some of, of your influential riffs with us, talking about songs. Is there anything else you'd like to plug before you go? Anything else? I would. I didn't catch that last part. What, that, what? that you'd like to plug? Anything you'd like to? To, to oh yeah De- well yeah go people check me out on instagram spotify it's all justice west the same name you could take you know however you fancy um i don't know wow this is some pressure what a shout out <laughs> oh, to my no, mom no. <laughs> uh my brother shout out to my wife uh who was wondering why i didn't shout her out first over here <laughs> um <laughs> shout out to fender thanks for the you know everything um and uh, uh, wow, is this how my Grammy speech is gonna go? I was I gonna say, so. I was just so bad. So. <laughs> Wrap up music. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, aren't they supposed to play me off by now? <laughs> no, man. Thank you very much. It's been a, it's been a real joy to, to meet you and, and, and listen to you and uh, and share ideas. And and I know I learned a lot. So hopefully everyone watching did too. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, so for everybody out there, uh, thank you for watching. Everybody, keep practicing. Keep safe. And we'll see you next time. Everybody, we're going to play on a, on a G chord, a concert G. One, two, three.